The constant monitoring of the Ukrainian Helsinki group and other regional Helsinki monitoring groups recorded a pattern of repression that not even hardened Soviet apologists could defend. This monitoring information eventually trickled up to the willing ear of United States President Ronald Reagan, a leader who often in his remarks attacking the Soviet Union would cite specific actions reported by the Ukrainian Helsinki group. In May 1988, during a trip to the Soviet Union, President Reagan insisted on meeting Soviet dissidents. Of those invited, 96 attended an afternoon tea at Spaso House in Moscow. Among those 96 were Vyacheslav Chornovil and his wife, Atena Pashko, Petro Ruban, Mikhailo Enola Horen, and Ivan Hell. Only months earlier, both Chornovil and Horen had still been inside the Soviet prison. Now, the US government estimates that there were, from all 15 Soviet republics at the time, approximately 35,000 Soviet political and religious dissidents behind bars between 1986 and 1987. The fact that these four Ukrainian dissidents were among the 96 was a bit remarkable. That success can be attributed to an intense and coordinated, coordinated advocacy effort by the Washington DC office of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, board members of the aforementioned US Millennium Committee, and simply Ukrainian Americans who had connections inside the White House and Congress. Despite, long -standing, uh, despite the longstanding between tensions uh, between certain diaspora groups in this instance, a coordinated and full effort was made to make sure that several Ukrainians met with the U United States President, and it worked. Lists of violations were not the only information smuggled out of the Gulag and out of Ukraine. An entire system of underground writing, letters, diaries, poetry, and books were transformed into a samidav, self-published self texts. Outside of prison, in order to own a typewriter in the, United, in the U USSR, the typewriter would need to be registered and approved by local authorities. Of course, in the Gulag, there were no typewriters. Therefore, texts were handwritten in tiny, tiny letters on small pieces of paper, which would then be passed along from one reader to another. When that self-manuscript made it out of Ukraine and into the West, whether in paper, small pieces of film, two publishers were available to reprint these materials. Prolog, which published the in the journal uh, Suchasnist, or the publishing house Small Skip, which ran out of Baltimore by the recently deceased and deeply dedicated Osip Zinkevich. Pan Osip's network of contacts among the members of the Helsinki group was extensive. Some in the Ukrainian diaspora involved in human rights activism fondly refer to him as Zink the Link. <laughs> Thank you.